Okay, so welcome back. Part two today is optional. I'm gonna take you through step-by-step -step of how to create like a radial balance uh, design for your weaving loom. Remember that before you can do lesson number two, part two, uh, which is learning how to weave this plate, you do have to draw your design and add color to it because you won't be able to do that once we turn this into a loom and start weaving. So I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step of how to create a design. Um, you're welcome to follow along with me. I'm also putting a folder in here with a bunch of different clip art that I found that were pretty cool. Um, I tried to pick ones that weren't too complicated. Um, remember, it doesn't have to be overly complicated. What I wanna see is a radial, um, a radial balance design. That means that there's multiple lines of symmetry that I can draw through my plate. A line of symmetry is that line that I'm going to draw through and I can fold it in half and it'll match. I should be able to do that in lots of different places. Like this should look like a pizza pie. I should have lines that I could draw all the way through in multiple places to create a line of symmetry. So let's get started. You can follow, with, follow along with me and you can make yours match mine. That's fine. Um, but if you have your own line style ideas as we go, Go ahead and add some, some variance to yours. Let's not have ours all look the same. You can add some variety by making some of your own artistic decisions as we go along. All right, so I've got my marker here just to make sure you see my designs. I highly recommend you do this in pencil. Pencil is always the preferred method of choice when you're getting started because that will allow you to erase if you make a mistake. So I can already see in the middle here that this imprint of Chinette is gonna make it a little complicated to get started. But remember, your weaving is going to fill to about here. Remember, it's gonna fill about half of your plate up. So you're gonna weave about this much. So the spots that are inside of that are not, I don't want that to be your most complicated piece. It should still be pretty. It should still have some pattern to it because our weaving is gonna stick out as we look kind of from the side view, the little side perspective of our piece, you'll see underneath. So I still want it to be colored and look nice. So the best way to get started is to think about, you know, finding that center. I want you to think about creating rings as you go. And in each ring, adding some sort of line style that will create a pattern. That's probably the most basic way to approach doing a radial balance design. Um, some places will recommend that you go ahead and divide this into like six or eight pieces. And then in each little slice of pie or slice of pizza, you would create that design and then you would make that design look the same in each one. So that is a, sep a secondary uh, way to approach this piece. But I'm going to go ahead and start in the middle and create rings that go around. So working with like a petal shape is a good way for me to get started. So you can see since I created six petals, I'm kind of going to create six slices of pizza that are going to be the same. So this is just all about lines. So within there, I've created my first ring. So if this were further out, I might go in and create some dots or some line detail there, but I know it's gonna be covered up, so I don't wanna focus too much on that part right now. Now you can see, obviously I'm working with a, a marker and my circles are far from perfect. I still think it looks great. I'm not that uh, much worried about perfectionist. I'm worried about the the effort. So if I was in a pencil, I might erase that and try to even that out. But I'm not going to mark you points off if your lines look like this either. Okay. So lines, shapes, I'm building outward as I go. Like I said, I'm thinking about
creating rings. So you can see my first ring here was of petals and my next ring. I'm going to start to get a little bit more intricate with my patterns here. Because I'm about to, about to hit that spot, that sweet spot of being done with my weaving and where my designs are really going to reach out here underneath my weaving. So this is a design I see a lot in the kind of Indian inspired mandalas. So that's where I'm pulling this inspiration from. So the trickiest part of making a mandala is trying to make it as even as possible. Remember, it's just repeating the decisions that you make. in one section and then repeating it in the next. So I hope you're starting to get the hang of this shapes and lines and then right in here I'm really going to go back and add detail because that's going to stick out under my weaving. So I'm not done with that yet but I am reaching kind of the end of my plate here. So where you see the, the dash marks on the rim, you are going to end up cutting those tomorrow to get started on our weaving. But just right there. So if you want to make designs that go all the way up, that's great don't cover up those dash marks because they are perfectly measured for you. If we were in class, I would have had you measure these yourself. But since we're not, I was trying to make it a little bit more simple for doing this at home. Um, and so thanks to my husband, Nathan, who helped to trace these on each one. So you have 19 tally marks on here and we need exactly 19 to make sure that our loom is gonna work. So that part is really, really important that you if you create your design to go up onto the rim of your plates, it's important that that design does not cover up those tally marks or you're going to have a really hard time completing this assignment correctly and getting your loom to work. I don't want this to turn into a frustrating process for you, so that's probably about the best advice that I can give to you right now. Okay, so... As I'm finishing up here with my design, I want you to think about using your markers to add color to this. I'll go back in and do that myself. And I'm going to take my time to do it really nice. I need to remember that just as my trying to make my lines and shapes in each segment match, I should do the same with my color. Okay, that radial symmetry, I want it to match as much as possible. If I draw some lines through here, I should have lots of different segments that match as much as possible with the next piece. All right, like each one of these little teardrop shapes or petal shapes, they're not quite the same. I have a few different number of stripes as I'm filling in this space, but it's pretty darn close. 
That's what I'm looking for is your effort. And I've definitely put my effort into this. Okay, I think that's about done. I think as I color it in, I might uh, maybe just fade my color out onto my plate. Like Maybe I'll do some dark reds behind and fade it into orange and yellow on the, the rim to still add some more um, decorative details here. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Rem remember that again, in the folder are lots of other ideas for you on how to fill your space on your mandala inspired design, your radial balance design. So use the folder and find a design you like and you can recreate it or you can kind of do what I do and just get started and just decide which shape you might want to make next and make decisions as you go, as you create your artwork. This is one of those things where it's like once you get started, sometimes it's hard to stop. All right, but since you have the general idea, I'm going to close off here and let you get started on your plate. So remember, a radial balance design should have multiple lines of symmetry. It should look like different pie or pizza pieces that match as much as possible to the one next to it. As you get past that kind of halfway point, I really want to see lines being utilized as decorative details to add some really beautiful visual interest to your work. All right, I'm gonna stay busy. You get busy on yours. See you tomorrow to make your loom. Don't forget that once you finish, flip it over, pick one color of yarn, and go ahead and put a dot of glue and let it dry overnight, unless you have tape. Uh, this is an important step so that you can start to create your loom together as a group on Tuesday. If you forget to do that though, you can follow along tomorrow while your glue dries. I'm gonna teach the lesson again on Wednesday for the friends who need a little extra help or who couldn't join live on Tuesday. I really want to make sure that you have an opportunity to get this done correctly because weaving is something I think you'll all truly enjoy. All right, see you tomorrow.